Round okay. of applause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll uh, I'll go through a bit of Svelte first, uh, and then we'll write a small application. So we'll write sort of a photo album. Um, so this is, was originally a four-hour workshop at Java Zone, so we won't be able to complete it all. But it's basically you have a list of albums. You can click on an album to view the photos in that album. And there are some features, and then you can click on to change photographs, and you can edit um, just to show off how Svelte is sort of built up. Uh, so we will start here. Really, <laughs> an empty slide. Okay. Uh, I'll just find the slides then and my other. Um, so everything is up online uh, at this. Um, I will post this as well, I guess, on the Meetup page. Um, and it's a tutorial in with steps, and all the slides and steps are in here. And they're highlighted with code changes with diffs for each step, if you want to follow along uh, later. So to so show a fan of how many have tried to do anything with salts, oh, a couple. So Svelte um, is really more than a li library. It's a compiler as well. So what you're writing is not sort of what you're sending to your browser. So it will compile that down into sort of vanilla JavaScript or proper JavaScript. And then you have Svelte Kit, which is sort of the glue between your server side and your, um, and your front end, uh, where you can get sort of thing like hydration, where you can uh, server side render everything or parts of your application so that um, Google will know what's on your page and then you can hydrate whatever you need when, you, when the user clicks around. So uh, I found this uh, quote which I really like. Uh, the road to hell is paid with the best of intentions, which is all of the frameworks that have ever existed. Uh, they start out with good intentions and then they sort of grow to the point where people won't use them anymore and then find some else, something else that is smaller and leaner and the cycle goes. So Svelte is of course uh, a word. Uh, well, I didn't know that before uh, Rich Harris uh, told that in some, one of his talk. It means slender and elegant. Um, you can make up your own mind if you agree. So my name is Joachim Shaye. So I'm a consultant at Experius. I also wrote a book about 10 years ago about Ember.js, uh, which was sort of the um, competitor to Angular. And of course, in Norway, we we're really we're unipolar, so we didn't choose Angular. Oh, and sorry, we chose Angular. So, um, but Ember is sort of um, a stricter model than Angular, um, where it binds you into a development module, which I sort of liked. Uh, and then on my spare time, I run a make space for kids uh, out at Chesmo Koshe. Yeah, so Svelte is a programming language. It's also a component framework, um, though it doesn't provide you with any actual components, but it lets you write components. And everything you write is a component. And then it will compile whatever you write uh, into JavaScript, as I mentioned. And then Svelte Kit is uh, sort of like Next.js, which is the meta framework that sort of lets you have all those advanced features. Um, and then it helps you build full stack applications uh, that are not necessarily uh, single page apps. So uh, all your Svelte components, they will be put in a file that ends with .svelte. And it contains uh, scripts at the top. Uh, and then whatever is between script and styles uh, is your template. Uh, and this is sort of looks like normal HTML. Uh, but then you have these uh, handlebars sort of code. And I really wish that the fr front end framework would just agree. Do we use one or two <laughs> curly braces? Uh, or do we use some other symbols? Um, because they all tend to want to invent their own path. Uh, and then you, of course, have the styles that belong to this component uh, in the styles section. So I really like this approach because it's clean uh, and it looks sort of like HTML, even though it isn't. Um, but it feels sort of like you're developing 
enriched HTML while you're developing. So it has um, a react a re reactivity similar to the other frameworks that we, as we saw. Uh, and then it adds on uh, stores, which we'll, uh, I will show later when we do when we code. Uh, but then it doesn't have a shadow DOM or a virtual DOM. Um, so it sort of it doesn't need to do all this DOM manipulation that all the other frameworks are doing. Uh, and I think that's the reason they can avoid it is uh, because they do actually compile your code. <coughs> yeah, I think we went through most of this. Um, one major advantage of having a compiler, though, is that the Svelte, the library, can sort of just tack on any feature they want, any any sort of they can just grow exponentially. Uh, but it, the compiler will make sure that you won't ship that code when you deploy your code, because it knows what parts you're using and it will only include that in your deployable, which is sort of a major advantage of a compiler. Uh, all the other frameworks are sort of struggling with this. Uh, they, if you have 500 kilobytes of JavaScript you need to ship every time the user enters the page, that's probably going to be a cost if you have a lot of users. So as we as to to mentioned, reactivity just looks like normal uh, variables and functions. And there are some caveats. Um, yeah, so we can't put uh, the reactivity has to be sort of at the top level of your components. It can't be inside of functions, and then you will lose your reactivity. That's sort of the main reason I think they're moving on with singles. Uh, but it feels a bit like magic because uh, you're not doing anything, and then suddenly your page just updates. So there's no bindings. It doesn't have a run loop where it has to ever evaluate all your bindings, like Angular and Ember and um, I think most of the libraries that have bindings. Uh, so it means your application runs faster. Um, especially with Angular, for every binding you have, your application just becomes that bit much slower. Uh, and then you can have some reactivity statements. Um, and because Svelte compiles, it can invent its own uh, structure. So this uh, dollar colon, which I seem to be able, unable to mark, uh, means that this product uh, is derived. Uh, so that's a reactive part of uh, Svelte. It's a bit hard to grasp at first, but you get used to it once you've coded a few, a few of them. Um, yeah, I think we'll skip this one. So uh, stores, uh, if you have shared states that you want to use across components, uh, then you usually you do that with a store. Uh, at least that's my preferred way of doing it. I also use the stores to get or fetch my data from the backend. So it has a range of other load functions and, and other uh, ways of doing that, but I sort of like using the stores. I feel like I have more control. Uh, so we'll generally you will subscribe to a store and then you will notify whenever data in your store change. Uh, so it's sort of like a single-ish, but it's not a single uh, implementation. So um, even though stores are really part of the Svelte JavaScript file that you get when you only use Svelte, I sort of like to envision it being sort of in the middle between a Svelte kit and a Svelte. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, the Svelte um, team describes the Svelte kit being built on Svelte. It's a UI framework, uh, uses your compiler to write breathtaking, breathtakingly concise components, in their words. Um, and it feels like you're using just normal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, which I think is the, one of the main selling points, at least, especially for me, uh, at least for me. So with Svelkit, you have a, a bunch of uh, extra features. You, have, you can render everything or some things server-side so that you ship when a user enters your page, you will ship with the data so that it can be rendered and accessible by, um, by a robot. And you get sort of hooks and form actions, and you can uh, generate API in your install kit and hydration and all that good stuff. Um, and another main feature of Svelte is the way it handles routing. And this is also because it has a compiler. It can use your file system to tell it where, which URL 
routes map to your files. Uh, and this is also what Ember did, which is one of the features I really liked about Ember. Uh, so this is from Angular, uh, and here you define your routes. So this is, uh, you access slash heroes in the browser, and then you will need to tell Angular, this is the component I want to use for this route, which I really hate. <laughs> Uh, because this doesn't enforce any, any kind of uh, structure in your code, uh, and it starts out nice when your project is new, and then three years down the line, when there's been 50 developers hacking along, you will always have to go through and just find which component renders this route. It's just horrible. Um, so Salt makes away with that. So this is an example from Ember, at least. Um, here, it, you, didn't, you, know, you, you could find the URL, and then at this path in your source, you would find the file for this URL. But you still had to sort of do all of this stuff. And then React is sort of the same. You have a route with a path, and then you have the element, uh, which basically is the component that you want to render this path. So in SvelteKit, it's... Uh, uh, you have to sort of understand your directory structure. There are some symbols you need to know, but other than that, it's, it follows the path that you have your code in in your development uh, when you're developing. So this is the way it looks. Uh, there's a lib directory uh, where you can put uh, common stuff like uh, components and uh, stores um, and also other things you want to have in accessible for your whole application. And then in your routes directory, uh, these folders here, they map exactly to the URL. So this album here, whatever's in this fo folder will be accessible via slash album. And then this album ID is sort of the dynamic part. So if you select uh, an album, it will usually have an ID. And then this uh, square brackets means that this folder, uh, whatever's in here, uh, is a dynamic part. And then you can access that from within your components. Uh, via the album ID property. Uh, and then there's a few files uh, inside of each directory. So there's a page file, uh, which is the code for this page. So if I access slash album, I will be here, and it will render this page component here. Uh, I don't know if it, it sort of prepends everything with plus. I'm not sure I like that or not. Um, we sort of get used to it. And uh, most uh, IDs are good at showing you which directory they're in. So it doesn't really become a problem, but it seems strange. Uh, and then you can have layout.svelte files, uh, which are if you have, um, I'll show an example later, but if you have one in your tree here, if you, you have a layout that's supposed to be uh, available for all of your sub routes, you'll put them in the layout, which is sort of like a template. Uh, so it means, uh, especially if you're new to a project, and if you so you open up a task in Jira and you're supposed to fix a bug, and then you go to that URL, you will know which file you can find that code for, <laughs> which is uh, seems like a small thing, but it's really not. Um, yeah, we'll skip this. Um, and then I just want to show one more thing um, before I move on to the code. So uh, if you have, uh, here I have a, a URL, which is slash my route. Uh, and then if I have put a plus layout.svelte file, uh, this will be rendered. And then it'll render whatever's in here. And then there's this slot um, tag. And this is where it will render its sub routes. And this is also another thing that framework should just agree upon. Should it be called slot or should it be called, I mean, it's different for every. <laughs> for every framework. Uh, so if I move on to the next. Uh, so if I, so, sorry, if I enter, if I also add a page.js, uh, or sorry, it should be page.svelte here, uh, then it will render that in, uh, in place of that slot uh, tag. And if I navigate down to my, uh, whatever subroute I'm navigating down to, then the parts of the template Svelte file remains, and it just replaces the slot with your sub routes. OK, so then we have a project here. 
Um, so um, I will do live coding, and uh, so this is a game. <laughs> uh, it's really hard for me to see stuff when things fail. Uh, for some reason, it's uh, your eyes just go searching everywhere. And uh, so if you spot an error that I made and you see it, just point it out, and then you don't have to watch me scramble, and I don't have to scramble. <laughs> um, right. So uh, the first thing. Um, well, actually, I do have some code uh, at the start. I have an API. Uh, so there are some code here. And this is basically to give me some data. So if I access uh, this API directory, then it will just give me this JSON structure here for my photo albums. Uh, and then if I access uh, photos, oops, if I can spell. It will just give me this JSON structure. So it's just to get some data in without having to code this specific part because it's not exciting. So the first thing I want to do here, I want to fetch all of my albums and display a thumbnail for each of them. So what I'll do then, uh, I will go into my lib directory. Uh, and I've created a folder here called stores, which is empty. And I'll just create uh, a store for my uh, album. Um, so I'll just create a cell component. Uh, sorry, uh, no, I will create a JavaScript file. <laughs> um, like so. And then I will um, just start by creating uh, a store. And then I'll just use export. Uh, let and the name of my store, which is album store, <laughs> remember it from earlier. Uh, and this uh, is uh, either going to be a writable store or a readable store. It's sort of self-evident what that is. Uh, like, oops, uh, like so. And so now I've just created a store, uh, which is empty uh, at the start. And then I'll create um, a function, uh, which is going to be async because I'm fetching data. I'm just going to call it fetch albums, uh, and then I'm going to fetch some data. And there's multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to use the fetch API. So I'm just going to, going to get uh, my raw response from the server. And that's going to be await my fetch API. And it was slash API slash albums. And then I'm going to copy this part because I'm going to remember it. It's method get and some headers. Uh, accept, uh, which is going to be application JSON. And then it's going to be content. Like so. Uh, so this will give me the raw response. And then I'm going to parse that into JSON. So I'm just going to say let content equals await raw response as JSON. And then I'm going to put whatever I get back uh, into my album store. And uh, the store has a set method to update whatever's in the store. It also has an update method. And you can also subscribe if you want to. Uh, and since my um, uh, return JSON sort of put all the return into its separate uh, albums array, I'm going to say content.albums. So that means I can go into my Svelte, um, my page.svelte file, which is the, just at the top level of my routes. And I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to say script. And then I want to do something whenever Whenever my um, whenever this component is finished rendering uh, or whenever it's mounted on the screen, I want to fetch my data. Um, and Svelte has this onMount function built in, so I'm importing that from Svelte. 
and then I can simply here say um, await and then fetch uh, albums. Uh, and it should be imported from from this album store that I created, which is red for some reason. Why is it red? Is it the dollar? Yeah, no, yeah, this is a special directory. So this uh, Svelte knows where to find your lib. So this is correct. I'm just wondering if it should be like that. See if it works. Uh, doesn't get any error. Oh, okay, it sort of works. Uh, so it's here in the network tab. It fetched my albums. So I guess that works. I'm sure why IDI is complaining. Now it went away. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so then I have my um, uh, my albums in the store, uh, but I still don't have them on my page components. Uh, so if I look back here, I uh, created this store here and uh, marked it as export. So I can use this album store. And then I can do that below here. And I can say um, uh, hash each. And then uh, I can use album store here as uh, album. Like so. Uh, and then I need to import that as well from for my store. And then in here I can uh, just, just do a div and just say album.id. And then I get my sort of my uh, two albums up on the page, which is nice, but not what I wanted. So I create a div uh, with a class of. Uh, Album grid up here. And then I'll say this is a class of um, grid photo. Like so. And then I want to add an image. I'll just do it like this so it's easier to see. So I'll just use the standard image tag. And then I have my images put in the static directory inside an images directory. Uh, and then here I need to put my dynamic part of or the actual uh, name of the image or the uh, I want to use. So it's, I can just do it like that. I didn't have to sort of escape anything or I didn't have to know how to format this. And this is also because it is a compiler. So it so it does all this work at compile time. So you don't need to know Especially with Angular, it can be difficult to know. Do you need square brackets? Do you need, yeah. Uh, so then I get my images like this, which is sort of fine, uh, but they're sort of big. So then I can put my styles down here. And then I'll just say album grid. Uh, oops. Style, there we go. Uh, and this is a display grid. Uh, grid template columns, uh, which is a repeat, I don't know, five on my bar. And then I have an album grid photo. Um, and I'll say max width uh, is, um, what will be, 18%. 18 view, view width and uh, max uh, height, I don't know, I'll try 150 pixels. Uh, I don't know. Um, yes, 
as well. Image element should have an alt. Uh, undefined is not iterable. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Right. Uh, so this is um, because um, uh, with Svelte Kit, uh, it renders it also on the server side. Uh, and uh, stuff might not be available on the server side because I'm fetching stuff on the client side. So I need to make sure that uh, whatever I'm using is available in the browser or that I'm only doing rendering it when it's available. So uh, uh, we can fix that by saying if um, either going album store or we can use there is a browser uh, we can import as well. Uh, so that will only do that in the browser. It sort of breaks SSR, but we can do that now. Uh. Huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, so let me get my stars back. <laughs> So almost, uh, and then we need to also do a little trick with the uh, image. So I'll just say uh, width is 100% and height is 100%, and then I'll say object fit is cover, and then I'm getting my albums. Yay! <laughs> um, so. How long did we have, Maxim? Huh? How long did we have? I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think you have uh, like 20 more minutes. Okay, but fine. Um, right, so this is uh, one step in the right direction. So what I want to do now is before I uh, put the main image up uh, that was taking up most of this other page, uh, I'll just create a link here so that I can click it and move into my album. And then uh, there's really nothing I have to remember to do this in, uh, in Svelte. I can simply use the normal A tag. I can just link into slash album, slash album ID, like so. So there's nothing really special going on here. Uh, there's no special link tag or A tag or uh, route link or whatever um, and then if I go back to my browser we can see that these are now links and I can sort of navigate into into this uh, URL uh, there's of course no component there yet so let's create that so um, that's this one so in my routes directory now I will create a directory I will call it album because that's what I called uh, the URL and then it also had a dynamic part. Uh, so that's <laughs> almost. Ah. Like so. Uh, and whatever you call this, uh, what, whatever inside of these uh, square brackets is what the dynamic part will be called when you try to access it in your component. So in here, I also need a Svelte component, which is plus page. And if I just put something in here, um, photo, uh, then uh, this will be sort of <laughs> uh, rendered here. So um, what I want to do now, I just want to, sorry, it should be an album, doesn't matter. Uh, I want to just, make sure that I can get that ID and just display the name of the album that I've clicked on. So I'll start with a script tag. I'm going to use my on mount again. Uh, and then I can use uh, a Svelte store that's already uh, available for me, which is called dot page. And then I think it's params and then whatever 
uh, whatever that ID or the, whatever is inside those brackets there. Uh, so if I use this one and just start by um, putting that out on the page, and then I can see that I've got my correct uh, album in here. Uh, so then the next uh, thing I want to do now is I want to get my I want to get the, um, uh, the album that is associated with that ID so that I can display only that album. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to make a small change uh, because now I have this page that's felt, uh, but I want some of my, especially my data uh, for this application, I want that to be sort of shared. So I'm going to create a layout where I'm only fetching my data. So I'm going to create a new Svelte component here. I'm going to call it plus layout. And I'm just going to move some of my stuff from here. Uh, I think it's just basically this. Like so. Uh, and the nice thing is that I can now remove this from my page. Uh, and I can still just import my album store and that will be propagated with data. So even though I didn't fetch this from my page specifically. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Correct. Oh, this is web development. Yeah. It's, uh, web support. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that is right. Uh, because now I created a layout and I didn't have a slot. So there's nowhere to, to render my uh, subcomponents. So I just need to put that in my layout and I'm back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I didn't have to sort of specifically fetch my albums uh, inside of this component because it's in the layout. So it's available from that route, uh, and you can also access it from subroutes. So then, in my page dot svelte here, uh, I want to. I have this ID here, and I want to only get the album that I want. And I'm going to do that with this reactive, uh, a little weird sort of dollar colon uh, syntax. And then I'm just going to call it current, uh, or current album, which is equal to my um, album store uh, dot find. And then it's just going to be album dot ID equals 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 and then this here like so and now I should be able to just uh, her album dot ID for instance and then if I click here then I still get this only this album out uh, and this is reactive as well so when I navigate um, this store will change. So if I sort of navigate from one al album to another one, uh, and everything that's in this uh, line here is sort of reactive, so S uh, Svelte will know what's depending on what, and then it will reevaluate and change this current album automatically. Uh, so here it looks similar uh, because I'm going to list the photographs that are in this album. So I'm just going to borrow some code here. I'm uh, basically going to say copy this into my into here. I'm just going to say if cur album up here. And then there's a div too much, no. Uh, but then of course I'm not going to iterate over my um, uh, my album store, I'm going to iterate over my current album's uh, images. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, which is a photo. And I'm going to remove this link for now. And then I'm going to need the CSS here as well. And I'm going to show uh, one nice trick here. Oops. Like so. Um, and if I just make a change here, and uh, I had uh, repeat five in the albums. So say here, I just want the photographs a bit bigger, so I want them to just be repeat three, and then uh, thirty-one percent or whatever that is. 
Uh, and then I'm getting my photographs, but I'm sort of missing something is undefined. Uh, ID. No. Uh, maybe it's just like this. Mm. You're importing albums from without the dollar in front, is that deliberate? Uh, yeah. I think what you did before uh, with the question mark there is correct. And then if it's undefined. <coughs> okay. Strange, because I don't have that in my uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, so uh, here I have, right, uh, I'm having the exact same CSS class name here as I had in my uh, previous component, uh, but yet uh, here my photographs are larger than there was in my album. Uh, so if I go back to the front page, uh, these are smaller, and then when I click, uh, uh, the images are larger, and the reason for that is that Svelte will add, will tack on an ID to all of your uh, components, or sorry, all of your CSS classes. So here you'll see, uh, this is the this is the CSS class that I created, and then it created this sort of strange looking ID. Uh, and it does that so that whatever, whatever your CSS, whatever, whatever CSS you put in your page components, they are only valid for that page. Uh, so they're not, they don't leak out anywhere else, uh, which is sort of a nice trick, and I think most of <laughs> the frameworks are going to adopt this. Uh, Angular, is sure, uh, they had sort of like a, with, when I talked about Angular 18 and sort of doing this way as well. So uh, it means that you can have components and you don't have to worry about whatever CSS classes is in your global CSS. Um, and that might not seem important, but if you're importing stuff, say Bootstrap or whatever sort of framework, you don't know <laughs> all, the, all the stuff that's uh, sort of created there. So you might override stuff if you don't know. Uh, here you don't, sort of don't have to, or you don't, Svelte won't allow you to. Um, right, so let's do one more thing. Uh, so in my, um, in my top level layout file, uh, this one here, I want to have sort of like a slideshow at the top with all my photographs. Uh, so then I need to also fetch, I need to create a store for my photographs. Uh, and it's going to be almost exactly the same as my uh, photos, or uh, sorry, my album store. Uh, I'm just going to swap out a few things. Mainly I'm going to copy paste, um, or just remove album and replace it with uh, photos. So of course, in a real application, you would maybe do more <laughs> sanity checks here, um, but it, this works for, for our purpose. So now I basically created a new store, uh, a photo store, uh, which will fetch my photos from the API and put them in this photo store, uh, writable store. And I can go into my layout and I can await fetch photo with an S. No. <laughs> there. Uh, and then I'm also going to import uh, photo store. I'm not sure why my ID is uh, acting up today, but. Maybe it's okay. Let's see if it works. Yeah, okay. And now it's not ready. <laughs> okay. It's a delay. Uh, so um, here I want to uh, go back here into my page file. And then just above here, I want to sort of magically select a random photograph from my array of photographs. And I want to display that one. So I'm going to do sort of a similar thing here. I'm going to say uh, selected photo equals photo store uh, dot um, off, isn't it? Pretty sure it's off. At. Um, 
and I'm gonna find my find an ID. Uh, so if I just here say three, for instance, uh, for now, then I can say if selected photo, and I'm just going to create an. Sorry, I'm suddenly in my JavaScript head, like so. And then it's going to be an image again, and um, the source is going to be uh, images uh, selected photo dot id, and hopefully then <laughs> uh, reading at. Yeah, I'm not sure why I. Uh, I didn't complain earlier. Okay. I didn't add the image though. Ah, thank you. There we go. So we get an image here. And if I, uh, so now I want to sort of, because now I'm only going to showing the third image every time. Uh, so we can do some uh, little bit of magic. We can use uh, math dot uh, floor uh, math dot random times um, photo store dot length not leaf like so and I'll add a question mark for uh, good measure and then every time now I'm getting a new image uh, and then from here it will be not too hard to ensure that this um, maybe has some nice it selects a new photograph say every 10 seconds and have some CSS transitions and then I won't code that CSS live <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's not it's not a huge amount of code to do something like that. Um, I think I'll sort of end here. There's a lot of more features of Svelte that I won't be able to cover. Um, but what I find with Svelte, um, other than that, it's really hard to pronounce, is that the code is clean. Um, and I might be sort of Ember biased. Um, writing a book about Ember sort of rewires your brain. Um, so it looks sort of like Emberish code. Uh, but what is nice is that everything is in one file. Um, and, and I like that it looks like HTML. And anything that's not is sort of like very easily distinguishable from the rest. And there's a little sort of magic characters there's not too many curly braces or square brackets or and there's no star ng if uh, sort of the, it feels like a nice framework and the websites you get out of it are really fast when the user are using them uh, and if you take advantage of uh, server-side rendering and hydration um, you can get load times of uh, milliseconds out to the to the clients if they have a fast uh, connection and then salt will sort of magically just <laughs> hydrate your uh, your website with uh, javascript um I, I know it's a bit strange to say it because if you move back in time say if to for those to remember java server faces and all of those frameworks pushing javascript to the browser that way everyone said no, no you can never do that <laughs> So, uh, I don't know, it's sort of like a full circle, but now we have uh, dramatically better tooling to be able to support it. Yeah, uh, so I will, um, so my God. <laughs> I will send out the link to the GitHub re repo I showed earlier. Um, you can post it as a comment uh, on GitHub. Yeah. So as I said, this was a four hour workshop at uh, Java Zone uh, and it's sort of nicely laid out. There's slides for every step and there's code. You can see what changed, what's 
been put in and out for every step. Um, and it goes a little more detail than I'm able to do in 40 minutes here. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. That was real teamwork. Yeah. Good. Any